Hi, my name is Cheese, and today I want to talk about and explore something that might sound a little bit off-putting, but I hope might be of value to someone. Uh, I want to talk about my relationship with maths, and I'm going to apologize in advance. My handwriting is terrible, <laughs> um, but my my education and my exposure to maths wasn't very engaging. It didn't lead me towards finding any real enjoyment in mathematics. Although I should I should say I, I maybe it squashed what I had. <laughs> I was homeschooled um during the the early part of my my uh educational life cycle, I guess. Um and yeah, as I moved into institutionalized education, I I found negative or as I moved back into institutionalized education, I found less 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 positive experiences with maths um and as a result maybe not as a result maybe maybe that's just how i am um but um if we if we crudely draw the average person let's put some squeals in here why not yeah okay so this is your average person's maths brain let's put a little triangle there why not um and i think if we um consider my maths brain it's 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 like just very tiny <laughs> it's so tiny um i have i have a lot of trouble keeping um stuff in my head but i do have and i have found some types of maths to be rewarding so my my day job is that i'm a game developer and i have reasons to use maths often um I can get by without it for a lot of things, but for some things I need to sit down and and put in the work and and work things out. Um and I want to I want to walk through um a thought process that I had last night. Now, this isn't really a tutorial, right? There are there are lots of different ways to do things, and I think the ultimate point that I'm going to be trying to make is that everybody learns differently and different people find different things engaging and maybe that needs to be a bigger part of how we expose people to things that we consider essential knowledge, right? Particularly maths, particularly language, um, <laughs> ideally music, um, and, and other disciplines as well. Um, but for we we generally consider that basic numeracy and basic literacy are, are deeply important for for people to have, and in general, uh, they have the power to enrich people's lives. Um, but I don't think the way that we present it to people gives room for individuals to find what resonates with them personally. So, with all that in mind. Uh, last night I was thinking about a game concept that I I may make. I haven't decided whether I'm going to make it or not. Um, but it would be using a shape called oh my goodness, a hexagon. In fact, I'm, I'm going to draw that better because that's that's terrible. Uh, so it it mostly would be um, you know we have a hexagonal grid uh, building off stuff that I've done in Hive time. Uh, so and I was thinking. I was thinking about how would how would, how does camera rotation work? If you want to have camera rotation on a, on a hex grid, I don't have it for Hive time. I was thinking about it. Eventually, I decided to not do it um, because I had other things I needed to focus on instead. Um, but this time, from the ground up, I would like to allow the idea of, of camera rotation. And I and I got to thinking like, what well, four directions doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, you've got up and up and down. That's fine. If if we're rotating the camera around to provide different different angles side to side doesn't really align nicely with with the grid um the way that it would for a, a square grid and i was thinking all right well well how much would i need to how much would i need to rotate the camera by in order to to get to another vantage point that feels natural and aligned with the grid 
Um, and so in my mind, I was like, well, maybe, maybe not this angle. This is this gives us then six rotations around to get back to where we need to back to the origin, original point. Uh, and maybe that's maybe that's not the way to go. Maybe maybe it makes more sense to go this far. And as I laid in bed, I was thinking, all right, well, how do I go about working that out? Um, and and this is this is how my thought process went. I went, okay, how do I go about working out what is the distance between a perpendicular? What is the angle between a perpendicular line from this face and a perpendicular line from this face? Um, now there are lots of ways to work this out, and some of them make a lot of sense. It might be easy. Some of them might be. There are probably many, many easier ways to do this than um, than what I did. Um, but my first thought was, well, what I would would like to start with is what is this? What is this angle in here? Um, if we assume that it's a regular hexagon, a regular polygon, where all of the angles and all of the sides are the same. Um, uh, and and I, I, I'm going to lean on a couple of existing pieces of knowledge or existing pieces of concepts. Uh, so I guess I guess I should write those down. So that's going to be, uh, so one is uh, uh, well, regular uh, polygons uh, have equal, well, uh, side, sides, why not? And that's a piece of knowledge, right? Like, that's something that you kind of, for now at least, will say that you need to discover somehow and already have in your in your inventory of ideas. Um, uh, my first thought was, is are there any rules about hexagons that might match... Uh, another piece of knowledge that I have, which is that um, uh, triangles, uh, corners, add up to 180 degrees. Um, and this one, I'm not, I'm not going to go through this regular polygons thing because that's a much more abstract concept. Um, but for, but for this. Oh, all right. Uh, I don't have any spare canvas over there. Let's let's do this here, I guess. All right. So if we have a triangle, and this is an arbitrary triangle, right? Um, let's let's pretend that we're cutting off this corner, and we're going to rotate it by 180 degrees, which is that. And I'm going to move this up here. You could do this with a real triangle. If you cut a real triangle out of paper. Um, uh, you can you can do this as a, as a test. Um, if we rotate this by minus 180 degrees, and we then shift that up to here, we'll see that all of the the angles put together make a straight line. And that straight line means that we've gone from uh, you know zero degrees to 180 degrees. Um, and that's that's like an interesting thing. Like that's an experiment. Hang on, let's let's put some jagged corners in here. Why not? <laughs> that makes it much easier to read. Um, this is interesting. This is tangible. There is a certain type of person who is going to be able to relate to the experiment of doing this and working it out and discovering. Hey, if we join all these all these angles together, we get one hundred and eighty more than they're going to respond to someone just saying all of the corners of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Um, and that's, that's, I guess that's the crux, right? Is that we can, there are multiple ways to express things and some are going to work better with other people. Um, the third piece of knowledge, so, so knowing that triangles add up to 180, um, without, you know, you don't even actually need to know what those angles are. Regardless of what those angles are, um, the corners of the triangle will always add up to 180. That's just the nature of how triangles work. Um, otherwise, it won't be a triangle, it'll, it'll have like curved sides or, or whatever. Um, so, 
I'm thinking about this hexagon, and I'm like, okay, well, we know that this top side is flat, and we know that this bottom side is flat, so what if we, what if we just draw a line down here, and we kind of make a square, or a rect, let's call it a rectangle, because uh, it's not necessarily square. Um, the thing that we, the other piece of knowledge that we have is that the uh, uh, corners of a rectangle are 90 degrees each. Um, and so that means that if we've got a, uh, we've got a square, oh wow, that's, that's quite a square, every corner is going to be a right angle. I mean, that's, that's how we define uh, a rectangle, is that all of its corners are 90 degrees. That's, um, yeah, that's, that's how we, we differentiate a rectangle from a rhombus, uh, or, or a trapezoid. Um, which are like just fancy names for squished rectangles, right? Um, but we, <laughs> this 90 is, is embarrassing me. There we go. That's, that's less embarrassing. Um, so we've, we've got, we've got this piece of knowledge, which means that we know that this is 90 degrees in here and in here, right? We've made ourselves a triangle in here. So we can say that all of these angles, these three angles is 180 degrees. And we know that 90 plus 90 is 180 as well. Which means that if we add up all of the angles on on this side of the hexagon, we end up with 360. And if we do the same for the other side, which is, is symmetrical, right? Uh, it's, it's exactly the same on the other side. That means that we end up with 720. Um, so we plus that, and then we uh, times 2 gives us that. Uh, we know that the combined total of all of the the angles in the hexagon is 720. We don't yet know what each of them are individually, but we can work that out. If we know that all of the corners, all of the all of the angles, <laughs> if we know that all of the angles are equal, then we know that if we divide this by six, then we're going to end up with the uh, hang on, let's uh, let's let's erase this line because we don't we don't need this here. This is conceptually, we don't need this. We get, we'll end up with what is what is this angle? We'll call that theta. Why not? Um, so, seven hundred and twenty divided by six. Again, tiny tiny maths brain. This is how I think. This is how I work. I go, okay, what's the easiest way to turn this into something that I can work with? Uh, I can divide both of these by two, right? same as we did up here, which becomes uh, 360 divided by 3, uh, which is a lot easier to work out. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 6 twice, 120 degrees. So 120 degrees is how, you know, is the angle of this, this corner of the hexagon. Now, that doesn't get me... <laughs> we'll come back to this in a second, um, but that doesn't get me quite what I wanted. That doesn't get me the if we if we imagine another hexagon, and we'll pretend it's better drawn than this one. Um, that doesn't get me from here over to here, right? That's that's our our end goal. Um, but I know something else. I have another piece of knowledge. Let's put a, a four here, um, which is that hexagons, and and. Uh, this is not true of all polygons, it's not true of all shapes. Uh, hexagons can tile the plane, which is a concept. This, this is another kind of abstract thing, like number one here, so we can't, we can't necessarily, um, well we can. We we can, and this this is gonna this is gonna come back. And maybe this will make the revelation a little bit easier in the long run. But I guess I guess it doesn't matter. So the the idea behind tiling the plane is that if we have a hypothetical space that is infinitely big, um, we can put this shape on it with no gaps forever, right? And that that's what tiling the plane means. It means that if we had an infinite number of hexagons. And infinity is a tricky concept to work out. Um, but, you know, the the reason that we have to say it's infinite is because if we have a square, then obviously we can't fit a whole hexagon into this this weird corner here. 
uh, or, or, or this weird corner here, or any of these weird things that would be corners if they were actually corners. All right, here we go. We, fi we finally got a corner. <laughs> this weird corner here would, would cause us problems if, if the space wasn't infinite. Um, but they fit together seamlessly, right? That's what tiling the plane means. Basically, you can fit them together seamlessly um, without any problems. Triangles can do this too. Um, you, can, you can tile the plane with triangles. Uh, and that's that's fun, um, and the idea is that it's it's one shape, right? You can't do this. Uh, squares can do it too, so that's that's what our our grid is really like a a, a rectangular grid or or whatever we want to call it. That squares can tile tile the plane, um, but pentagons pentagons have five sides, um, and they cannot. You can't really fit pentagons together. Uh, this is, this is going to tax me. Um, yeah, the moment that you try, you end up with a little gap here. You can't do it. Same with hex. Uh, same with octagons, uh, which are eight-sided. You either need uh like a little square to fill the gap here between between octagons. Wow, this is uh, <laughs> uh yeah, you, you need extra shapes to fill in those little gaps. Um but uh triangles, squares and hexagons, they can tile the plane. And one nice thing that we know from from hexagons tiling the plane is that if this is a hundred and twenty, and this is a hundred and twenty, and this is a hundred and twenty, then we can easily work out what the angle between this face and this face is, right? So it's it's 360, 360, which is is the full circle, right? Minus 120, which we can say is 240 degrees. So it's 240 degrees from here all the way to here. Okay, future me here. That's not what we have. And I'm going to realize that in a second. Uh, and I'm going to spin the wheels for a little bit while I work out exactly what's going on. But I wanted to leave it in because it's part of the process. Exploring something unknown means that what you're going to find along the way is unknown. Maybe you're going to head down a dead end and something's not going to work. Maybe you're going to stumble on the thing that you want straight away. But the point is that you don't know. And for me, that's part of what makes it fun. Um... So yeah, anyway, I will I will let past me get back to it. <laughs> but we'll get there in a sec. Alright? That's still not what we're after, but it's close. One other piece of knowledge we have. <laughs> I I didn't think that we had needed this much knowledge, but I guess we do. Is that on on a hexagon, on a on a regular hexagon, that is a hexagon where all of the sides are of equal length, um, this side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side. Uh, this this hexagon is very wobbly, it's made of jelly. Um, but what that means is that the angle from here and the angle to here is 180 degrees, right? So if we know the angle from here to here, then we we can easily work out the angle from here to here, which is what we're after, right? So, I, I'm trying to think, like, what is what is the nicest way to, to convey this? Um, we can't just subtract, well, I mean, we can, and we will, and it'll be fine. <laughs> um, I might have lost myself here. I might have lost myself. The um, <laughs> this is my tiny maths brain can't hold all of this at once. Um, uh, so what was I gonna say? Yeah, uh, opposite sides. Uh, sides of a uh, regular. It's got to be a regular one. Well, actually, maybe it doesn't. Let's think about this. No, of any. Doink. Hang on. There we go. Of a uh, hexagon. 
uh, are parallel. Um, and if we, if I could draw better, <laughs> we would be able to, to, I mean, we, we can observationally, we can see this, right? Like this angle is the same, or this side is, is the same, um, angle as, as that side. This side is the same angle as this side, the top and the bottom, they're both parallel. It's fine. That's really cool. Um, so if this is 240, we can subtract 180 from that, right? Uh, to get back over here, All right? So if we <laughs> if we then subtract 180 from here, um, we end up with a zero, and we have we have like a I I don't know how people do this stuff. Um, four minus uh, four minus eight uh, leaves leaves six, um, and then we have to take one off here, so that that becomes a one. Uh, is that is that right? No. Yes. Yes. Um, so we end up with 60 degrees, which is not what I thought it was. No, it's not right. <laughs> I've messed it up. I've messed it up somehow. <laughs> I thought I had it. I thought I had it. Um, all right. So now we get to, now we get to see my math brain like spinning its tires as quickly as possible. Um, because I know I know conceptually where I need to end up, <laughs> but I've not ended up there. Uh, or maybe I was wrong. I mean, I, I don't think I was wrong. I'm 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 ninety percent certain. I'm ninety percent certain that uh, that I ended up with the correct answer last night. Um, and you know what? Maybe this wasn't where I went. Maybe this wasn't where I went. Um. So. Ah, this is kicking my backside. <laughs> um, hmm. We want to. We want to know what. We know what this angle is, right? This is. This is 120. Which is is the interior angle, right? Of 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 this. I'm pr I'm pretty sure that that what I what we've just done here is we've found the interior angle here, where I was trying to find this angle. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is 60 in here, and that makes sense to me. Um, but we didn't find it via the, the knowledge or the, the, the rules that I had already established, and that's slightly embarrassing. Um, but what we, what we can then do, um, uh, yeah, this this angle in here is 60 degrees. And, and the trouble is, like, I didn't want to go through this. I didn't want to say this is about measurement. We don't want to measure stuff. We're trying to think through the concepts. Um, and this particular branch of maths is called geometry. Um, uh, and it's less about this addition of multiplication and more about, like, the logic of how things are related, uh, which is the bit that I find fun and the bit that I find engaging and exciting. Um, but we did... We did just grab the interior angle here, and I want to just very quickly work out in my mind how we ended up there. Um, we took 180 off this, right? So that means that we, we just basically killed half of that and uh, added the remaining bits together. Which if we add 122... We get 180, which is the other half. Yeah, so, so we did. Yeah, we did. We did. We worked out what the what the interior angle between these two are, uh, which is good. That's the next step, right? Uh, and this this is in fact where my brain went last night, but I was falling asleep, so <laughs> I didn't really I didn't really absorb what I wanted to absorb. So the angle that we're after, this angle here, we've we've worked out like we've worked out what what one step is, which is to here. We want to work out what two steps is, which is to here. Um, so we'll times that by two, uh, which is 120, 120 degrees. Um, and this is interesting. We've, we've found something, and this, this is the bit that I wanted to, wanted to land on, is that if I want to skip, you know, if I, if I want to, if I want to divide rotations around 
a hexagon where I skip every second face, um, um, I'm rotating it by 120 degrees, which means like the other way that we could have worked into it, uh, worked at towards it was a hexagon has six sides. We're skipping every second side, so we're breaking 360 degrees into three, uh, which is 120 degrees. Um, but I, I, that's not how I wanted to work it out. I wanted to I wanted to arrive at it intuitively. You know, <laughs> maths is is most interesting when you feel like you have the space and the opportunity to be creative. I think, <laughs> and that's what I was doing. I was going, well, what is intuitive to me, and how do I explore that? And and this is how I did it. I was like, okay, well, I work out the interior angle here, and I need to multiply that by two, and then I get the. Uh, I get the angle that I want, which is is this angle here, and it's 120 degrees, and it's really interesting, right? Um, because what we're saying is, if we if we have a hexagon down here, um, and we're gonna can pretend it's a nice nice hexagon, it's got a little smiley face in it. Um, it doesn't. <laughs> We've worked out that this angle is 120 degrees um, from from here to here. But we've also worked out that this angle is 120 degrees, um, which kind of means that if we, if we, if we had, like, it means that 120 is an important number for hexagons, right? It means that there's something special about that number. I don't know what it is, um, but. Uh, if we if we divided, you know, if we if we if we mapped out this angle across a whole bunch of hexagons, um, we would find. Uh, or I hope we would find <laughs> that we would we would in fact be drawing. Oh my goodness! This 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 is worse than this. This is terrible. Um, we would in fact be drawing, and this is kind of fun. Um, and that goes out that way. This one comes down. Oh my goodness! All right. So so like, I guess a moral of this story is that you don't have to be good at something to find it fun. Um, what we've done if we if we map out. What am I doing? If we map out this as though we're tiling the plane, and we draw from the center of every hexagon, um, if we if we draw these kind of 120 degree abstract rotations that we we were working out, if we if we draw that across, we've just drawn a whole bunch of more hexagons. So we've used hexagons to plot more hexagons, and that's interesting. That's interesting. The shape that we end up with. Right? If we have a hexagon and we we divide it up into this, right? Um, we've kind of created a pentagonal shape. They're not they're not regular pentagons, uh, if we're working off regular hexagons, uh, but they have one, two, three, four, five is that five? That's six. <laughs> five sides. Um, we've created like little, we've divided hexagons into what would be equally, uh, like equals uh, five-sided shapes um, out of this. And then from those five-sided shapes, we've built most of a hexagon uh, that a little hexagon fits in the middle of. I don't, I'm not going anywhere with that. It's just something that I thought was interesting while I was thinking about it in my head last night. Um, but the thing that I like here is that we have a bunch of knowledge. Most of them we can, um, you know, the this this one about rectangles is tricky because the definition of a rectangle is that all of its corners are ninety degrees, and it only has four sides. So it's kind of a tautology to say that the corners of a rectangle are ninety degrees because that's that's what a rectangle is. That's how we define it. There's no other. It doesn't tell us anything new. It it only reinforces what we already knew. Um, Regular polyhedrons have equal sides and angles is another thing. It's like that's what our definition of a regular polygon is. Um, so there's no nice way to break that down. Um, but hexagons can tile the plane. Opposite sides of the hexagon are parallel. 
uh, and triangle corners add up to 180 degrees. And these are all things that we can observationally arrive at. These are all things that we can discover on our own by thinking about and playing with the shapes. You know, we tore the corners off our triangle here to make up to 180. We observationally, like by looking at a hexagon, we could see that all of the sides are parallel. And the nice thing there is that after we've worked out like this, every corner is 120 degrees, we can use a bunch of other maths to prove that all of those sides are equal length and, and parallel. Um, and that's kind of fun. Uh, we have also um, been able to more or less prove that hexagons can tile the plane. And that's just that, again, that's just that they fit together seamlessly with no gaps. Uh, we can we can either draw or print out or cut out a bunch of, of hexagons and we can discover that for ourselves. Um, so we've we've taken we've taken a bunch of we've taken three definitions. Um, the regular polygons have um, Hang on, sorry, we've taken two definitions. Regular polygons have equal sides and equal angles. Corners of a uh, rectangle are 90 degrees. We've taken two two definitions, um, so they're not things that we can, can sort of observationally or experimentally um, uh, prove, but we combined that with three pieces of knowledge that we are able to arrive at experimentally um, and observationally, and we used that to find out a bunch of fun things about hexagons. We've discovered that 120 is this magic hexagon number um, that matters both inside and outside the the hexagon, um, and and we kind of solved uh, the little the little problem that I had in my head. And this is fun, like. I didn't. I didn't start out with a bunch of rules when I was thinking about this. I didn't start out thinking, "Here are all the the rules that I know about uh, geometry and um, and shapes and stuff." I thought my the starting point was I want to know something about hexagons, and I didn't immediately go, "Well, triangles are related to that." It wasn't until I thought of the idea of 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 you know, splitting a triangle off the hexagon. It was thinking that these two sides are parallel that allowed me to think, oh, well, if, if they're parallel, then if I draw a line between them, that line between them is going to be not, have 90 degree corners, uh, and I can do it at the edge where the, uh, the, the corner part of the hexagon, I can break that off into a triangle. And then I can say, all right, well, what, what, what knowledge do I have that's relevant to triangles? Let's see if we can work that out. At the time that I was doing that, I didn't know that it was going to lead me to where I ended up, which is that 120 uh, is degrees is where I want to go. Um, but it did let me explore, and it's it's the act of exploration in this sense is creative. I think you're you're trying to understand how you can apply things that you know uh, to things that you to other things that you know, to arrive at things that you don't know. Um, and for, particularly for programming, like that's how programming works, right? You, you, you're you trying to explore and understand a possi possibility space by uh, using tools that you know to create outcomes that um, either do or don't do what you hope that they're going to do. Like until you write something, you don't know whether or not it's going to work. So I there's an unknown that we're exploring there. Um, and, um, yeah, doing this kind of stuff, you know, I do this kind of stuff in the shower, I do it when I'm in, in bed, when I'm, I'm about to go to sleep, I do it when I'm out walking. Um, I think this stuff makes my maths brain bigger. So it's, it's not, it's not regular person sized, <laughs> it's me sized. And along some axes, particularly when it comes to geometry and this kind of stuff, I find that really exciting and really engaging. Um... I find it fun to do this stuff in my head without a computer doing it for me as a recreational thing. And I feel like if you can find a way that you want to do mathematics or you want to do um, 
drawing, or you want to do cycling, or you want to do ice skating, or you want to do sculpting, or you want to do cooking, or whatever, if you can find a way to enjoy it, if you can find a way where it is a recreational thing for you, then it's easier to get excited about, and it's easier to explore, and it's easier to practice, and it's easier to get better at, because it's something that you enjoy. And I hope that if, if you watch this, uh, that that you find something that you feel like you should know, or need to know, or would, would benefit from knowing, or, or being skilled at, um, and, and put some thought into it, and, and ask yourself, is there a way that you can make that thing fun for you? Because if you can, that's a gateway into being able to grow and and develop that skill that otherwise might not be accessible to you. And it doesn't mean that you have to be good at it, right? Like, I, I mentioned ice skating earlier. I am absolutely terrible at ice skating. But it makes me very, very happy to do. So you don't have to be good at something to enjoy it. Um, enjoying it is the part that matters. So... Um, I think, for me anyway, maybe not for you, but for me, I can get rid of this question mark now. I got rid of it years ago. <laughs> but for the sake of this, this, this discussion, I can get rid of that. Maybe maths is fun. I hope that's been interesting, and uh, good luck. <laughs>